All right, guys, so we are going to start laying out these interior walls, but not all of them. We're just gonna be installing the walls right now that we need in order to set our eye joist so that we can get our, our ceiling defined, and then we'll come back in and we'll frame everything underneath. And the reason we like to do that is because with eye joists, they're so structural and rigid and stiff that when you set them on a wall, a top plate on an interior wall that's maybe not exactly perfect, it can throw off your floor and then you know you have to twist and tweak the eye joist to get back down on top of another wall plate maybe just eight feet away or whatever it is so we like to just throw the main frame walls in which are we've got two main frame walls that we're going to have eye joist sitting on and then uh, we'll fill everything else on the inside but what we're going to do is just double check some dimensions yeah go ahead and butt it in dude 13, six and a quarter. So let's go ahead down here, Greg. Let's mark 13, six and a quarter, which is very, very, very close to where it's within probably an eighth inch where the plumber had originally used his marks. So that's good. All right, let's go ahead down here. Let's mark a 13, six and a quarter. So we have a nice snap line to mark. Hey, wait a second. We're gonna go three and a half additional so that I can get an outside because I can't get super close to this guy. Now, one thing you're gonna notice is that we're using regular lumber for our bottom plate. I'm not a fan of treated lumber because it's never dimensionally accurate to the rest of the lumber being used. It's always a little bigger. It's sometimes gets twisted up with the moisture in it. And I find that by using this lumber here, we get a better, or we get a better job, I think. And it's a little bit easier for us to manage. So what we do is we go ahead and seal tape our bottom that's gonna be in contact with the concrete to ensure that it you know, doesn't have any issues with moisture. Even though this is all interior, it's got a radiant heated floor, I don't, I don't expect any issues. It's still just one of those things that, oh, it doesn't take much to just run this tape out. Okay, so I got my top and bottom plate. We're gonna go ahead and set the laser up so that we can accurately check each elevation point on every stud so that we can cut them to the exact length so that when we get to the top of our wall, it is as flat as possible. We don't want to follow the concrete if there's any issues. This is one of those things that it doesn't hurt to check and take out any potential air right now. All right, so we've got our laser set up. This point right here is our reference. We checked from the, from the plate to the top, which is where the top of our floor wants to be. And it's 103 and a half. Believe it or not, that's exactly what we want it to be because nine foot minus the four and a half inches of this material is 103 and a half. So what that means is we're gonna set the grade stick up so that the laser zeroes out and gives us that nice tone perfectly right here. And then as we go through and measure each spot, it's gonna give us the dimension that we need to adjust each stud so that it can be exact. I'm just gonna put my weight on this just to bring it down and then you can write the number. For a high, so we subtract an eight. And you add an eight. Cause I need to go up an eight, which means it's actually lower. Oh. No, you're high. Yeah, I need to go up an eighth, which means add an eighth. I need to take this up. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes. so that's plus eight. So that's minus a quarter. So by using the laser and the grade stick, we can make sure that each one of these studs is cut exactly to the dimension. Is it overkill? I don't think so because we went from zero to three sixteenths, to quarter, to eighth, to sixteenth, and it was all kind of all over the board because, you know, when these guys are doing this concrete, it's not perfect, man. Um, yeah, especially going around penetrations, pipes, you got drains, showers, uh, you know what, it just happens. So this way we can kind of offset it and, and gives us our nice um, second story level floor. What I'm doing is making my partition wall framing. So this is gonna go in my main wall and this is where a two by six wall is gonna die into. And this is obviously so that there's something to connect that to, but also so that the drywaller has some, uh, some framing to, to drywall to. This is where I always try to use up some of my less than desirable lumber. And I do that because I can kind of straighten it out a little bit by utilizing the different pieces, bows and crowns against each other. And then I try to save the best lumber for my studs. I don't know if that's right or wrong, but that's just the way I've always done it.
Now, the way I was always taught to do your walls, the inside of rooms, or if you have cabinetry, run your crown to the outside. Now, we're obviously crowning all these boards, looking for the best, uh, to utilize the best crowned boards or the straightest boards that we can, but you're gonna get some boards that just aren't perfectly straight, and you always wanna run all of your crown the same direction. Just about ready to throw up this first wall. Even though I've got the plate level here, which we'll use in some instances, if we've got the laser out, which we already had it out, honestly, it's just the easiest way to confirm a perfectly plumb wall. So I'm gonna set it up on my mark. Easy way to get it exactly where you want it. I just want you to know to make sure you use your back. Make sure that when you come up with it, give it a nice quick jerking motion, and that'll really ensure that. Yeah. 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 Like I said, it's not that heavy. I just want to make sure that this side doesn't come apart until we get the double top plate on, which I could have done, but that's pretty exciting. That's our first wall in here, and it definitely defines at least a little bit the space because when you first come in here, you're thinking, dude, this is huge. And it is still big, don't get me wrong, but it really cuts down on, you know, by the time you put a couch and a living room here and a dining room here and the kitchen over there, this great room is not as big and out of place as you might have thought when you first saw this space. Um, and the living space back here, you know, that is gonna be big. You got a door that's gonna go right into your uh, spare bathroom, which will be used off of the living room and if in the kitchen or whatever, you're outside on the porch. This is about where the hallway starts that takes you back into the room. So I'm excited. I wanna keep making these walls, defining the space. It's cool to finally see it start to come together. So we're gonna keep going. Ready? Yeah, this one's easy. I better set my depth. So I know that people, people are gonna be curious because this is a radiant heated floor. There's tubes everywhere. Those tubes are down on top of our styrofoam. We have a five inch concrete slab and I'm using a two and three eighths Tapcon. So really all we're doing is we're getting, you know, a good connection. It's not gonna go anywhere. Um, and we're only gonna be going in an inch and three eighths into the concrete. So one thing I wanna do is make sure that my depth is set for the Tapcon. So we only wanna go a little bit deeper than the Tapcon is itself. And think about it, the odds are always in our favor, right Greg, I think? All right, as we continue to frame our walls here on the inside, we need to finish this partition wall between the garage and the house because we need to insulate it. So what we're gonna do is insulate, finish the wall framing, and then we can continue to connect our walls to it. So right now, obviously you can see, we've only got the garage side framed. We also need to frame the house side, and we're using these R19 fiberglass bats because we just wanna add a little bit of sound control and temperature differentiation as well as some temperature control between the two buildings. We've got a zone in the garage, and then we've got a couple zones in the house so that they can be controlled different. We didn't think that spray foam was the way to go here, being that we've got our air barrier and our moisture barrier on the outside walls. This is just a partition wall, and the fiberglass is gonna be just fine uh, for this application. So what we're using are these nails. They've got a big washer on the top, and we're just gonna put some tacks in them uh, we're not going to go crazy, but just kind of hold it up, get it into our girts, and we're going to stack these right up the wall, and then we can continue our framing. How's that knife working? What do you think? Mm-hmm. To 
the Butte Clark. All right, so now that we have this insulated, we've got the wall framing done that we need to have done. We can go ahead and start standing up our walls that are going into this wall. You ready? That's the, uh, the closet side. Ah, dang it guys. You know, every once in a while you make a mistake. I overlooked the fact that we moved this wall over so that we had more room down here at our entry door because the door ended up being really close to where this wall was. So way back when we did the plumbing layout, we moved this wall in and uh, I didn't account for that on my plan. I, I just didn't have an updated uh, dimension on here. So we're gonna go ahead and move this header this whole door assembly, we're gonna slide it over, refasten it, cut off our excess top and bottom plate, and then we'll just keep going about our way. I hate doing rework, but sometimes, sometimes it just happens. That Diablo just went through those nails like it was butter. I don't, what nails? I don't what? Know, I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah, Mark. Not yet. Just move that over for now. Yep. Oh, I've already got a, I've already got a mark right here. Is that your outside? That's my four and a half mark. Can we get this one mark, this mark too? Another inch and a half, right? Uh, no, I'm actually going to, I'm going to actually use that plate level, nail this, and then nail that plum and then I'll also do the same thing over there. That way it's just perfect. You must have messed up a time or two, you know? <laughs> I got these fixes figured out, man. <laughs> I love fixing my own mistakes. They make me only better, you know? Problem solved, man. My fix, your mess up. Together we're a beautiful team, dude. My mess up. Nice job, dude. You know, it does stink when there is mistakes made, but that's part of it. The biggest thing is I've learned over the years, Greg, what's the lesson when you make a mistake? What's the best lesson to learn? Cover it up. Cover it up, but more importantly, do it quickly. Uh, and what I mean is don't waste time thinking over, oh, I gotta do this again. I, how am I gonna fix it? Just do something because that's the only way it's gonna get taken care of. We could have hemmed and hawed and tried to find solution after solution, but just, Fix it, make the, make the change that needed to be done in the first place and move on. But cover it up quickly. Ready? All neck. Okay, we're gonna go in. One, two, three. You could get, yeah, good. Yeah, it's starting to come together, man. So what we're doing is we're not jumping the gun here on getting wall finishes up, but this is the utility room. And right here is gonna be a service panel for electrical. All of this piping is coming out of the floor for, um, and I think there's also some domestic hot water somewhere, but this is going to be the radiant heat. So this wall that we're gonna cover up right now is gonna be a bunch of surface mount mechanical stuff and we're trying to prepare for that to happen next week. So you got that side? Yep. Let go, let go. Okay. Let me do it, let me do it. All right, so this three quarter BCX sanded plywood will give a nice surface to mount everything. It's solid with that being three quarter inch thick. And um, you know, 
it can be painted, it's gonna look really nice. It's a mechanical room. This is what we decided on for these walls. This was just something we knew we needed to get done before we left today. Even though I'm gonna double my top plate, I'm trying to make sure that I continue the same layout, 16 on center for all my studs throughout all of these walls. And every perpendicular wall that the joists are gonna sit on top of, we're trying to maintain a 16 inch on center. So even though this is a little bit weird, I mean, if I did my math, it should end up that all of my floor joists sit on top of a stud in a wall so that weight can transfer directly down to the foundation or the concrete in this case. All right, I'm ready. You ready? I'll put this sucker on myself. Wait for your ass. <laughs> Just so random right now, you know? These walls are just so random. It's like wall here, wall there. I know it'll all come together. Little hit happened. Oh, too much. Yeah, somewhere in there. I started going cross that, so I hope it's good. Mm hmm. Do you bring two in? Uh-huh. Jeez, you're a beast. See if you can bring four in though. Are you that much of a beast or no? I don't want you to have to do all the work, jeez. YouTube is gonna think that you do all the work and I just film videos, you know? If you're gonna put these on though, just don't put them too close to my ladder because then I can't get them up. I know, sounds like a personal problem. So a lot of it's mental. I really do love eye joists because they're I mean, so easy to work with. They're lightweight, they're strong. We can span this distance without any real worries. That's just my opinion. And I think the opinion of a lot of builders, most customers don't want to spend the extra money, but I would, Greg, wouldn't you, if you were building the house? You know, all day. Hey, throw me that last one there, King. Now, let's go ahead and get this. Laser set up, we'll string this and, or not even string it, we'll just laser it, and we're good to go. So now with this green laser, we can go up to the top and be exactly one inch from the green laser with our tape measure. Go ahead, I'm gonna climb right up here, I'm gonna walk right down, I'm gonna go boom, boom, and you're gonna take that ladder and you're gonna go and measure it, see what I'm saying? So you're gonna measure it and hit it in and out, and I'm going to screw it right from the top. Yeah? Yeah. Every time I feel like I'm taking my finger's life in hand, you know, you never know. I try to hit the bottom first and then twist the top and get my hand out of the way. But sometimes you gotta have, sometimes I gotta run the top one. Nice lightweight wall. I did not frame in where the uh, stair wall is yet because I don't have that figured out exactly. How many are you bringing at me, 10? 10? 10 at a time?
Now you may be looking at this, seeing the overhang on each side, it's because we didn't want to waste our time cutting them back for no reason. These eye joists that we're running now are just going to be offset. What's up? Oh, nice, dude. These are just going to be offset two and a half inches back, but it won't be a big deal. We still have a 16 inch joist bay um, that's going to be used for any utilities that might be going through there. Plenty of room. This just saved us a lot of time not having to cut every eye joist exactly to a certain measurement. We could just run them wild. Yeah, then we just run, chain them all together, chain them all together yeah. And then, then it won't be a big deal. Heavier. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Before it goes all the way up, kind of like use the weight of it to. Okay, go up. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Go higher. Okay, go in. Good work. Unstoppable, dude. We're like the Chevy of construction workers. We're the best and we never rest. Lean it in. It's a lot easier than doing it up in the air. Watch out for that hole. Keep going back, keep going back. Okay. I max weight on this girl right now. Two people and plus 250 pounds. Maybe. Yeah. It's going to go against your eye joist on your right. More if you got it. No, towards me. Like, come my way. There. We're just going to get this out of the way. This is going to be a fun one, man. We could cut that off. I got the saws on out. You do? Yep. Yeah, let's cut it off. We don't have to be that high. Oh my God, Diablo Blades, dude. Can you speed that up? <laughs> Here, let me help you. Oh. There you go. Okay, good help, good help. Ready? Yep. One, two, three. Wait, 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 wait. Come up with yours? Oh, here. Yeah, I got a collar. Okay, there we go. Is where you like it? That good? Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, I think it's Always gotta clean up around these pipes, which is kind of expected. I just don't want these chunks to fall down and get underneath my plate, and then that kind of causes an issue. One thing you can see here is we've seal taped the bottom of these um, bottom plates. So if you missed it in a previous video or you've missed it um, just during this process, I haven't shared it enough. I just wanted to make sure you guys seen that we do seal tape the bottom of our white wood. So we don't like pressure treated. So using this wood is more consistent with our wall studs and I think it's going to be just fine. There we go. So I got this wall nailed together but it's missing its bottom plate because it's for this wall in here that the bottom plate needed to be installed. There was no way I was gonna get this wall in there. I should have built it earlier, but even then, the pipes were not very plumb, which meant it was gonna be very difficult to get them all into the hole with, uh, with this two by six wall, and I didn't wanna fight it. So all I'm gonna do is take this two by four, and I'm just gonna screw it to the studs. I went ahead and made a 16 inch on center layout. So it'll be, you know, right where it's supposed to be. This is just going to be to transport it into my room.
Last one. There you go. Nice. Seemed very difficult, but actually it wasn't too bad. It's heavy? Got her, dude. Nice work, man. Now, don't worry. These are all gonna get hangers on our um, LVL beams, the headers that we've got. I just tack them up with screws and then we'll come back in at the same time and do all the hangers. It just seems to be more efficient and uh, I don't know, one less thing I gotta have going on at the same time. While the battery powered um, joist, metal connector, hanger, nailer, thingy, majigger that I'm using here, uh, this Metabo, it is nice because you don't have the hose, you don't have the compressor running, but it is heavier. I would say that the tip is not as good at getting into tighter spots as like a good pneumatic version is, but I do like not having to run a freaking hose everywhere, man. Personally, I'll kind of, I'll kind of put up with the nuances. I'm just framing out the, uh, the perimeter of this staircase, getting some rim board around. Uh, that you know, closes up the joist bays, gives a nice solid face. And uh, we've just got to burn up some eye joists here around the perimeter. They don't fall in line with the 16 inch center layout. However, there's gonna be a wall framed right here. So just good solid, you know, good solid framing there. Luckily the tops of our walls are all straight. So that helps us uh, achieve this, otherwise it would be pretty tough to put an eye joist on a wall that wasn't very flat. Now this is boxed out. I need one more piece of rim there. Um, but yeah, it's nice to kind of define that space a little bit. All right, so this is actually the, one of the last walls uh, that we got to build here. Greg is now going around. You'll see here we've got blocking added in all of our corners, something that we kind of should do because all of our outside walls are running the horizontal framing. So there's really not a stud in every corner like there is with you know, like a typical stud frame building. So that's one thing that we have to do, but honestly, we've got tons of extra blocking. That's what Greg's doing. He's kind of going room by room. I'm finishing up this last wall, and then we're gonna just double check everything. And then our next, our next thing will be probably some subfloor upstairs. It'd be kind of cool. And that's the closet wall, so. Another wall down. That's the last main wall that we got to do for now. I got to get a pocket door frame to frame up the bathroom wall over here. Um, I guess that would be like the secondary master bath. And then it's on to the kitchen framing details, which we need to get some more LVL eye joists because we added a little bit of a, we made a big change actually, a big change. Instead of just this area we're in being the second story, the second story is now going to go over the entire kitchen area. It's gonna add another, what I tell you, Greg, 400 square foot-ish. I think it's about 400 square foot. 
Okay, 392, I was wrong. Anyway, about 400 square foot of additional second story space, uh, but what that did was change the way we were gonna do all this. So we've gotta change gears a little bit, get some additional framing members uh, to make some spans that are gonna be somewhat considerable and load bearing. So this is about as far as we can go right now. It'll be the next thing for us to do is all of our blocking, get everything framed in here so we can start framing our second story deck.